What do these things have in common? Well, they're all on my list of 10 things I had never done before I came to the US. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And over the course of these almost five years here in the US, there have been a lot of firsts for me, and there still are sometimes, so things that I had never done before I came to the US. I kinda wish I had made a note every time that happened, which of course in the first few weeks and months here in the US, it happened all the time, but I did my best to remember as many of those things as I could, so here are 10 things I had never done before I came to the US. Number one has to do with water. I'm one of those Germans that doesn't like sparkling water really, and sparkling water is more common than still water in Germany, and I don't drink a lot of soda or juices or anything like that either. I really just drink still water every day. And in Germany, I used to just drink our tap water right from the faucet usually. Here, however, I started using water filters for the first time. Now, this might be a me thing, but I don't remember a lot of Germans using water filters ever, and and these fridges that have an ice and water dispenser aren't very common in Germany either. So whether it was at work, at school, or at home, I always just drank tap water right from the sink my whole life, basically. Like, we'd always refill our water bottles in the school bathroom back in the day because water fountains aren't really a thing either in Germany. So I guess that would be another thing that I never did before coming to the US. But what I'm really trying to get at is that as soon as I moved to the US and lived with American roommates and had American friends, I noticed that most people who don't have a water dispenser built into their fridge have a water filter at home. It's usually a plastic container that you fill up with tap water and then you just put it in the fridge. They often look like this or this. Now again, these things exist in Germany as well. I've just personally never really come across them to that extent until I moved here. And I never felt a need to use one either because the tap water in Germany has great quality and tastes amazing. In the Munich area particularly, it's mainly fresh water from the pre-alps. In the US, however, one of the first things I noticed was that most of the tap water smells and tastes like chlorine a lot, which is something that was kind of hard to get used to at first, so I could see why so many people used water filters. Most people also do it to filter out lead that might have gotten into the water from the pipes and to filter out other chemicals as well. Even though I've kind of gotten used to the chlorine flavor over time and I'm often too lazy to use a water filter, I'll admit it, it's definitely something I've been confronted with a lot and and at my place, we actually recently got a water filter that's directly attached to the faucet in the kitchen, so you can filter the water directly from the faucet. And since then, I actually almost always filter my water. Let's get real, people. When I was on my period for the first time in the US and went to the store to buy tampons, I was totally lost. I was like, why do these come in huge packages like these? I mean, I knew that everything was bigger in the US, but even the tampons? Just for reference, this is what tampons usually look like in Germany. That's what I was used to. In the US, however, you'll get this when you open them. So the actual tampon is like up here, is the same size as in Germany, but they come with an applicator. That's what this plastic thing is called. And needless to say, I had never used a tampon with an applicator before I came to the US. And to be honest, I didn't do it many times either because I just found it to be very unnecessary and kind of just a waste of plastic. So I quickly switched to buying the tampons that I was used to from home. I couldn't find them everywhere at first, but they've actually become a lot more common in the stores now. The third thing I had never done before I came to the US is using a VPN on my laptop. But in the last few years, it's really become part of my daily life. I use it all the time. And that's why it's really fitting that this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, which is the one that I've been using for a while now, and I can totally recommend it. Now, what do I use ExpressVPN for? I mainly use it to access German content on YouTube and on the media libraries of German TV channels, or even to access their TV live streams. A lot of that content is usually geo-blocked when I try to access it from the US here, which really sucks, but with ExpressVPN, I can change my online location, so when I pick Germany, I can access those programs even though I'm not actually in Germany. I do that a lot to watch shows on the German TV channel Pro7, such as Joko und Klaas Duell um die Welt, or I also watch 
watch the soccer Euro Cup that just took place on the German TV channel that way too. Well, I didn't watch all of the games admittedly, but the ones that I did watch, I kind of liked watching them with the German commentary. Another amazing perk of ExpressVPN is that you can also get access to many more movies and shows on Netflix, BBC iPlayer and other streaming services. They give you different shows based on your location. So if you switch your location to the UK, you can watch Rick and Morty on Netflix, for example, or you can set it to Canada and watch Pulp Fiction. And I personally always access Modern Family and How I Met Your Mother on Netflix through the German location. Those are two of my most favorite comedy shows, but unfortunately here in the US, they're not on Netflix anymore. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% off your network data, which means that it's keeping your online activity more private and secure, especially when you connect to public Wi-Fi, like at the airport or at a coffee shop. If you want to take advantage of all of these perks too, just go to expressvpn.com and find out how you can get three months off ExpressVPN for free, or just click the link in the description below. The next point is one that I've mentioned before in my video on money and payments and also in my video on things that surprised me about everyday life in the US, but I had to include it on this list too because it's such a major point to me. Before I came to the US, I had never seen, let alone written or cashed, a check. In Germany, checks haven't really been around for a few decades now. At the stores, people still use a lot of cash in Germany, but big payments, like when buying a car or something like that, are usually made via debit or credit card, and things like paying rent and utilities is usually a bank transfer from or to your bank account. Things like rent or regular bills are often paid via a standing order, Dauerauftrag, or a Bankeinzugsermächtigung, a direct debit authorization. Same goes for getting paid at work. That's usually just sent to your bank account once a month. So it's very normal in Germany to just send out money to another person's or an institution's bank account directly from your online bank account. We also use PayPal in Germany, but there really isn't a big need for a lot of other payment services because transferring money between bank accounts is pretty easy and safe. In the US, however, things are a little different. I don't think anyone has ever asked me to send them money via a bank transfer here. I have had my salary deposited to my bank account before, but even that was a lot more complicated to set up than it is in Germany. Whenever the topic of bank transfers even comes up in the US, it's often connected to other payment services like Zelle that you kind of connect your bank account to and that you then make the payment through, or people get very paranoid about giving out their bank account information, which makes me think that apparently the system here isn't very safe. Of course, paying electronically in person is extremely common in the US. You can pay with your debit or credit card pretty much everywhere, and at most places you can also just pay with your phone. At the same time though, checks are still a common thing here too. To me, checks were such an outdated and foreign thing before I came to the US, but then the first week I was here, I was supposed to pay my rent via check. And this landlord wanted us to mail it to him too. I really thought I had just arrived in the 50s. Writing a check and sending it in the mail? Well, turns out that's not that uncommon, at least here in Cincinnati and I'd assume in other parts of the US too, that landlords collect the rent in cash or as a check. When I first heard that, I kind of thought that it sounded sketchy, like paying them under the table. But it's really been the majority of landlords so far that wanted a check or cash for rent and they'd either come by the house to collect it in person or when I rented from a bigger company, I had to go to their office to drop it off. They didn't accept a bank transfer. I had two landlords so far that were also okay with an electronic payment through Venmo or PayPal at least. But yeah, it turned out that checks would become a pretty normal thing for me here. I've also been paid in checks a lot for single jobs that I did as a freelancer, for example, and I've paid some of my taxes via check and have also gotten tax returns as a check in the mail. At first, this whole check thing was a huge obstacle for me because when I first came here as an exchange student, I wasn't really planning on staying here long term, so I didn't have a bank account in the US and without one, it's extremely hard to cash a check or write one. But now I have my own little checkbook and I've written many checks and I'm not gonna lie, it definitely makes you feel like an old school gangster a little bit when you fill out your check and then sign it and then rip it out from your little checkbook. And because I've gotten a lot of comments from people before who said something like, what? No, checks aren't common in the US at all. That must be just an Ohio thing. If you've ever written one or received one, then yes, they're common compared to Germany. 
This one I've also mentioned before in this video. During the first few weeks of my exchange semester here, I was going to a little festival that the university was hosting with food trucks and an open air concert and we were all driving there. It was all Americans and me and on the way there they said, hmm, it might be good to get some cash maybe because of the food trucks. A lot of Americans don't usually carry cash on them, so we headed to an ATM. And I was baffled when we got to the close by bank and instead of getting out of the car to all use the ATM one after another, it was a drive through Not for food, but for cash. A drive through ATM. I had never seen that before in Germany. So we all got the money while staying in the car the whole time. And... Well, what can I say? This was one of the first things I did when I finally got a car myself here, which wasn't until 2019. I was kind of like, okay, let's be as American as possible and get some drive through cash. I've heard that those things do in fact exist in Germany too, but I've never seen one during my 22 years of living in Munich, so they're definitely not a very common thing. Another first for me that I wrote down on my list is punching a hole in the wall. Now I should explain, I've never actually punched a hole into the wall myself, but I've seen other people do it and I've accidentally ripped holes into the walls when I tried to put screws in, for example. And one time when my roommate was moving in, they were carrying the bed up the stairs and in the curve they accidentally hit the wall and well, it also left a hole. Now, how come I had never seen that before I came here? Well, in the US, it's pretty common for houses to be built out of wood, plywood and drywall. Compared to German houses that are usually made out of materials such as bricks or concrete, this doesn't only lead to the walls being more transparent for sound and temperature, but also just not as stable. So in Germany, you definitely shouldn't try punching a wall because the risk of you breaking your hand is pretty big, but here, punching holes into the wall is actually Actually a thing, which is why it's a trope that comes up in movies sometimes too. Now what's more American than this? Shooting. I had never shot a gun before I came to the US. As many of you might know, here in the US you can go to shooting ranges to practice shooting. In Germany you usually have to have a license to shoot a gun, with a few exceptions such as Schützenvereine, rifle clubs that will let you shoot without a license, or you can also book shooting training sessions with a licensed instructor. But besides that, there aren't really places like here in the US where you can just shoot on your own without a license. Because compared to the US, we have really strict gun laws in Germany and not that big of a gun culture. Personally, I'm not a fan of weapons in any way, not even if it's for fun, but to at least give it a try, I went to a shooting range once here in Cincinnati together with another German friend. Now getting off topic for a second, I already know that a lot of people are going to ask me in the comments whether shooting a gun took away my fear of guns. Why am I putting it in quotation marks? Well, I mentioned in one of my videos that I'm for stricter gun control in the US, didn't even go into detail, and I just got a wave of comments of people saying things like, oh, you just need to let me take you to a shooting range, and once you learn how to shoot and how to properly handle a gun, you won't be scared of it anymore. Okay, so first of all, I don't need anyone to take me shooting. I can go to a shooting range myself, as I did. And secondly, what? Those comments are completely missing the point. I never said I was scared of guns per se, because obviously a gun doesn't operate without a human being. I think we can all agree on that. Now, I did say in the video that the presence of guns here in the US makes me feel unsafe. And that is still true. I really like going on walks by myself, for example, and I'd love to do it at night too, like around 10 p.m. or so, because it's really hot and humid here in the summer but there are armed robberies here all the time, so I can't even go on a simple walk after dark, even when I have my pepper spray on me and have someone to talk to on the phone while being out. In Germany, I can do all of those things. I can take the subway alone at night, ride my bike at night, walk through the city, and still feel safer than walking through the city here during the day. Now, did shooting a gun take away my feeling of being unsafe? No, of course not. Why would it? Me feeling unsafe because of how many people here have guns has nothing to do with me personally knowing how to shoot. Literally nothing. It's totally fine if people like shooting as a sport. That's a different story in my opinion, but there should be restrictions about that too. 
and the guns don't have to be at people's homes for that. If anything, shooting myself left me with an even more uncomfortable feeling because I experienced firsthand how even I, who I have a lot of respect for any weapon, got pretty comfortable with the gun after just a few rounds and almost forgot how dangerous that thing is that I was holding in my hands. So if anything, it made me realize that if even I get to a point where the threshold of pulling the trigger is dropping after just half an hour, I don't even want to know what it's like for all the people who go shooting all the time and have a much more positive relationship to guns. Oh, and another thing that shocked me a lot was that the people right next to us at the shooting range were shooting at a target that was shaped like a human silhouette. Just no. Now, did I have fun shooting? As I said, I personally think that you can totally enjoy shooting at a target for fun in an environment that is dedicated for that and still be for stricter gun control in society. My friend did actually really enjoy shooting, I personally didn't, I mean, I didn't hate it, I wasn't bad, but I just don't usually enjoy those kinds of things like aiming at a target or anything like that. But even if I had really enjoyed it, that would not change anything about me feeling uncomfortable about the number of guns in American society and the low threshold of getting one. But to get back on topic, shooting was something that I did in the US for the first time. The next thing I had never done before I came to the US is turning right at a red traffic light. I mentioned this in my video on driving differences between Germany and the US, but in Germany you cannot turn right when the traffic light is red unless you have this little sign at the light. That sign isn't very common though, so usually a red light means stopping until it's green, no matter whether you're going straight or turning right. Here in the US, however, it's the other way around. You're usually allowed to turn right at a red traffic light, unless there's a sign that says otherwise. Those signs usually just say no turn on red or no turn on red on weekdays or something along those lines. But even if you do turn right on red, you're still supposed to stop first, then look if there's any traffic coming and if not, you can turn. This next one was something that we talked about every single day on my first US road trip with my family in 2011. We traveled the US for over three weeks and stayed at a lot of hotels. And one thing that we all did for the first time there and that kind of baffled us was that even at four star hotels, we'd be eating breakfast off of disposable plates and with disposable silverware. I've mentioned this before in my conversation with Nelf, how I can't really get used to the fact that a lot of Americans use paper or plastic dishes at home, even if they do have enough regular dishes. In Germany, that's something that we really only do when it seems to be necessary, like at outdoor events where it doesn't make sense to carry the dishes back and forth or at huge potlucks or something. But at home? Maybe for a kid's birthday party, but if you want to create a nice atmosphere, disposable dishes kind of ruin that for us. In the US, however, I've seen more than one family getting all dressed up for Christmas or Thanksgiving, having the house decorated and everything, and then eating their carefully prepared food off paper plates with a plastic fork. So yeah, my family and I definitely didn't expect this at a nice expensive hotel, but at least it gave me another point for my list. And last but not least, the 10th point on my list of things that I had never done before coming to the US is getting groceries at 1 a.m. This is something that I find super exciting to this day. It makes me feel like a little kid almost that finally had their wish come true to stay at the mall overnight. As you guys know, the US really is the country of consumption and convenience. And there are a lot of stores here that are open 24 seven. And even stores that aren't open all night often don't close until like one or 2 a.m. That's the case with many of the grocery stores here, such as Kroger. And the first time I went to the grocery store in the middle of the night was a moment that really made me realize, yep, you're definitely in America. In Germany, it's normal for grocery stores to close around 10 p.m., but it varies from state to state. And in Bavaria, where I'm from, stores close at 8 p.m. even. And on top of that, all stores are closed on Sundays and public holidays. So growing up with that, I still find it fascinating that if I wanted to, I could technically go to the grocery store in the middle of the night and just do my regular grocery shopping. So those were my 10 points for today. I actually have some more points on my list, but 
As you guys have probably noticed, my videos tend to become a little longer than I intend to usually, so I decided to limit this one a little, but let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a part two and share more of those things with you guys that I had never done before I came to the US. And let me know what other things you guys can think of, so if you've ever visited the US as a tourist or have moved here from another country like me, what was something that you did for the first time here? Or what are your first experiences in other countries? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video but haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you should definitely do that now. Just click on the little subscribe button and then also click on the notification bell so that you don't ever miss a new video of mine. And of course, you can also find me outside of YouTube on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. And you can support me and my channel on Patreon and buymeacoffee.com or you can just buy some of my products, such as this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now that says Servus, it's embroidered, or the German-American t-shirt, or the Servus Tschüss hoodie, or a Bavarian beer mug that I designed for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!